Hi, I'm Doug Llewellyn. Throughout history, from ancient times to present day, coins have been highly prized and they have been universally regarded as a store of value, particularly those which were struck in precious metals. Now, ever since the dawn of civilization, coins have been highly esteemed for their beauty and their appeal as a solid store of wealth. For more than a millennium now, gold coins in particular have maintained their value. In fact, gold's purchasing power has remained intact ever since the 17th century. Now, you certainly can't say the same thing for paper currency. The ancient Greeks adored coins, and they were the first to promote coinage to the status of an art form. Coins were regarded as miniature sculptures, and they were created by the finest artisans of the time. Romans admired their coins, they followed suit, and they went on to further enhance the artistry. The ultimate modern rendition of this ancient coinage art form is best depicted by the 1907 Roman numeral $20 gold piece. Designed by the famed sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens, the creation of this coin was inspired by the high relief motif of the ancient Greek and Roman coins. Now, long before the stock market was ever conceived, a thriving and profitable rare coin market was in place. Over 300 years ago, coin collecting for enjoyment and profit gained prominence. In fact, rare coins have been actively traded ever since the 17th century. The legendary House of Rothschild, the famous European banking family, actually got its start dealing in rare coins and bullion. The rare coin market continues to thrive today. Worldwide, it's estimated that there are in excess of 100 million collectors with as many as 10 million of them right here in the United States alone. The collectible of kings and the king of collectibles. From the king of Siam in the early 1800s to King Farouk of Egypt 150 years later, rare coins have been enthusiastically collected and passionately pursued by many of the world's rich and famous. The DuPonts, J. Paul Getty and J. P. Morgan were avid coin collectors, as were the famed composers Jerome Kern and Hoagie Carmichael. Hollywood actors Buddy Ebsen and Gary Berghoff, violinist Yasha Heifetz, U.S. Senator Jimmy Hayes, Israeli Prime Minister Moshe Dayan, and hockey superstar Wayne Gretzky, sports mogul Jerry Buss, the owner of the Los Angeles Laker, and tycoon Nelson Bunker Hunt, even the mega-billionaire Bass family of Texas. Although this group has diverse backgrounds, they all have one thing in common, a passionate desire to collect and profit from rare coins. Rare coin collecting is not only a rewarding pursuit and a wonderful pastime, it can also be very prudent and a highly profitable investment, as illustrated by the following examples. Baltimore banker Louis Eliasberg invested approximately $400,000 in coins between 1925 and 1950. He consequently thrilled his heirs when his spectacular collection brought $23.7 million in two separate sales, and Harold Bearford of New York invested only $13,832 over a 20-year collecting career. Yet these same coins sold at auction in 1978 for more than $1.2 million, and that was at market bottom. These collectors and scores of others like them realized substantial profits because, first and foremost, they were interested in their coins. Unlike short-term traders buying and selling in an attempt to outsmart the market, they were collectors first and investors second, and therein lies the secret to their success. Now, these triumphs in the rare coin market mirror the advice of legendary financial portfolio manager Peter Lynch, who guided Fidelity Magellan to preeminence in mutual fund investing. Lynch said, the long-term holder always outsmarts and outperforms the short-term trader. The intriguing stories behind numismatic rarities are abundant and fascinating. As you research numismatic lore, you'll uncover fascinating stories about such things as the Comstock Lode and coins minted at the same time of the California Gold Rush. As you ponder stories of sunken treasure and long-lost hoards, you may find yourself intrigued by the involvement of presidents and first ladies. From Martha Washington, who donated her silverware, which was melted down to produce our nation's first coin, the 1792 half dismay, to Theodore Roosevelt, who personally commissioned St. Gaudens, despite vehement opposition from Congress and chief engraver Charles Barber, to sculpt the Romanesque high-relief $20 gold piece, which understandably is one of the world's most sought-after coins. You know, 
it's kind of like holding history in your hands. Just imagine the incredible feeling of holding a rare historic coin, marveling at its beauty and at the same time wondering what kind of stories it could tell if only it could speak. For example, was the silver dollar used by George Washington for the infamous coin toss across the Potomac the one that's in your collection? Was your Dahlonega mint gold dollar used to help fund the Confederacy in the Civil War? Or was it used by Abe Lincoln to buy a ticket to admission to Ford's Theater on that fateful night back in 1865? Or did Wyatt Earp happen to carry it in his pocket all the way from Dodge City to Tombstone? Who knows? You know, not only is collecting a fascinating and educational pursuit, but it can certainly be a wonderfully profitable one as well. And to be honest with you, there is no one more knowledgeable in numismatics than Silvano de Genova, the chairman of the board of Tangible Investments of America. Tangible Investments of America was founded back in 1977 and then incorporated in 1984 by Silvano de Genova, who has long been recognized as a leading market maker in the rare coin industry. He began his career as a rare coin prodigy, trading coins as a dealer while he was still in high school. A self-made millionaire in coins before the age of 21, he left the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania simply because he was losing money by staying in school. Mr. DeGeneva is an authority on the rare coin market, grading, authenticity, and appraisals. He has been featured in Fortune Magazine's People to Watch, quoted on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, and has been interviewed in hundreds of newspapers across the U.S. He additionally appeared several times as a commentator on CNN, FNN, and other financial news programs. Unparalleled credentials as America's top buyer. Why is it that coins are such a good investment? Well, first of all, it really has to do with supply and demand. There's a very fixed supply, and there's an ever-increasing demand. And the long term has shown us that coins have gone up. They've gone up faster than virtually any other uh, investment vehicle out there. Give me, give me a couple of examples. Well, a good example is Louis Eliasberg. He purchased a 1913 nickel in 1948 for $2,350. When his heirs sold it just last year, they realized $1,350,000. That's net after commissions. That's over 886% average annual return. In 1971, Sam Bloomfield purchased a 1907 St. Gaud's Extremely High Relief $20 gold piece for $55,000. When his collection was sold in December of 96, that same coin brought $825,000. That's an over 1,400% net profit or 56% average annual return, most impressive by any standard. Now these, of course, are examples of very famous coin sales. What about sales that you've handled yourself? Well, we sold a client an 1853 hours and raised quarter for $67,500. Within a year and a half, we liquidated it for him, and he netted $100,000. That's a tremendous return for just two years. Uh, another example is we sold an 1856 two and a half in proof 65 condition. Another fairly rare coin, very rare coin. He paid $62,500. Um, I informed him about two years after the purchase that we had a client interested. Within a few days, he had a check for over $100,000 for that coin. Even more impressive is short-term profits that I've been able to achieve for clients. In December of 96, I sold an 1803 bus dollar graded proof 65 for $115,000. Later in 97, I resold that same coin for over $135,000. The client made $20,000 net profit in less than a few months. That's nearly a 70% average annual return. This example was not intended to lead you to believe that short-term profits are the norm. However, they are possible. So are these types of returns typical for the rare coin market? They're not typical, but they're definitely achievable, particularly when you buy from a firm like ours that works on a very tight margin. Is it true that rare coins have a, an established history of capital appreciation? As a matter of fact, Doug, rare coins have had a very long-term appreciation. A perfect example is if you had invested $10,000 in the S&P in 1970, today you'd have about $79,000.
However, that same $10,000 invested in scarce, not necessarily the rarest U.S. coins, mm -hmm. would be worth as much as a half a million dollars. And other coins have performed even better. That's, that's pretty astonishing. So what makes investing in rare coins so much more viable investment today than in years past? Well, about 11 years ago, myself and a group of colleagues essentially revolutionized the coin business with the invention of the professional coin grading service. What this company does is it has top experts evaluate coins and then seal them in plastic so that they can be traded pretty much like stocks or bonds. So then a second grading service or organization came into being, right? That's correct. The second one is the Numismatic Guarantee Corp. And they provided much needed competition to the professional coin grading service. A lot like Moody's does for Standard & Poor's. What is the, the factor that determines the price for a coin? Well, there's a lot of factors that determine price. Supply and demand, uh, popularity of the coin, individual rarity. Uh, but these prices today are monitored on the certified coin exchange. A NASDAQ-like trading is now a reality. Rare coins graded and certified by either one of the services can be traded with confidence, much like stocks and commodities. Hundreds of dealers are now willing to purchase certified coins without physically inspecting them first, a practice unheard of a little more than 11 years ago. The advent of certified grading led to another revolution of sorts, the formation of the Certified Coin Exchange, or CCE. CCE is a nationwide computer trading network for rare coins. It functions a lot like the over-the-counter stock market today. It assures liquidity among market makers. CCE is also the number one source of instantaneous price information. In addition to the computerized trading networks, major auctions and coin shows are held nearly every week across the nation. These provide collectors and investors with another active marketplace. And also, accurate weekly price information can be found in the CDN Coin Dealer Newsletter or CCDN Certified Coin Dealer Newsletter which are the Wall Street Journal of the rare coin business. So the market has been very established as a, as a viable investment, but are there any other advantages to rare coin ownership? Well, rare coins are definitely the number one inflation hedge. For example, during 1974 and 75, where there was fairly substantial inflation, coins went up as much as 500%. Then in 79 and 80, when we really had rapid inflation, coins went up as much as 1,000%. And even in times of moderate inflation, like say 87 and 89, we had as much as 50% appreciation annually. Wow. Is there anything else? Well, yes. There's privacy. Rare coins are completely private. There's no documentation, no government paperwork to fill out. Uh, it's the only investment where Uncle Sam doesn't know what you're doing. And what about tax advantages? Anything there? Yes. In fact, there's a substantial tax advantage. When you buy rare coins, you pay no taxes until you completely liquidate your position. In other words, let's say I bought $1,000 worth of rare coins. I can trade those coins at whatever profit for another group of rare coins, and no taxable event occurs until complete liquidation. So you, you're working with Uncle Sam's money until you totally cash out. So what about the liquidity of rare coins? Just how liquid are they as an investment? Well, rare coins are not as liquid as stocks or bonds. However, they are far more liquid than any other collectible, more liquid than artwork, certainly more liquid than real estate. Uh, they are a very viable investment as far as liquidity goes. What about when to buy? Is this a good time? This is probably the best opportunity to buy in the last 10 or 15 years. Why? The market is absolutely at a bottom. Uh, it peaked in about 1989 to 1990 and has gone down 60 to 70 percent since then. Yes, Sil, in the words of George Soros' partner, the only trick to getting rich is sizing up supply and demand and buying things when they're cheap and selling them when they're expensive. That's exactly right, Doug. You hit the nail right on the head. All right, so tell me something. What's the, the, the potential? How high can, can coins go? Well, with Van Gogh paintings and Renoirs, approaching a hundred million dollars, rare coins have a long way to go yet. The most valuable rare coins only brought a million and a half dollars at auction, and other great rarities can be purchased for ten to twenty thousand dollars. 
So we feel the potential for rare coins is virtually unlimited. What about the investor who literally knows nothing about the rare coin market, but does have money to invest? Are you willing to invest the time yourself to try and educate someone like that in, in this arena? Well, Doug, that's what we're here for. We want to educate the public. We feel that the more th someone knows about numismatics, the more they'll like it, the more profit potential they have, and the better they'll succeed in their entire investing arena. Silvano de Genova's superior knowledge of rare coin grading and his unsurpassed market savvy have earned him the opportunity to participate in the largest single numismatic transaction in history. His services as a grading consultant were requested, and then he was asked to assist in the orderly distribution of the El Salvador U.S. gold hoard, which had a market value in excess of $50 million. Mr. de Genova has handled some of the greatest rarities of all time. He was the buyer of the Clifford Kagan San Francisco Mint Collection, over $2 million. Buyer of the Connoisseur Collection, over $2.5 million. Buyer of the 1879 Coiled Hair Stella for $800,000. He has been a leading auction buyer as well. Mr. De Genova has personally traded over $300 million of rare coins during his 20-year career, as demonstrated by some of the previous examples. You know, he is often the largest single buyer at major auctions, frequently purchasing 25% of the whole sale. Of the 15 most expensive coins ever traded privately, Mr. De Genova has personally purchased six of them. Additionally, Mr. De Genova has worked with many noted museums, institutions, and major auction houses, including the San Francisco Mint Museum, Sotheby's, and Christie's, functioning as an agent on appraisals and private sales. Mr. De Genova was also one of the original owners and the founders of the Professional Coin Grading Service. He is the one who personally designed the PCGS grading set of rare coins. To this day, it is the standard for rare coin grading. To put it succinctly, coin grading today, accepted throughout the industry, is largely based on Mr. De Genova's expertise. He is one of America's most successful rare coin traders. Over his 20-year career, Mr. De Genova has developed a reputation as one of the shrewdest traders in the business. If stocks and bonds were his business, he'd be considered one of the elite traders on the floor of the stock exchange. But his business isn't stocks and bonds, it's rare coins. He has, however, managed a seven-figure rare coin limited partnership known as Tangible Partners LP and supervises numerous seven-figure rare coin positions on behalf of clients. A number of his peers and competitors have compared his abilities to those of the legendary Wall Street investor Warren Buffett and Fidelity Magellan Mutual Fund Manager Peter Lynch. Similar to those great stock market investors, he makes money in the rare coin business every day by trading coins with the most experienced dealers in the business. In February of 1980, when the coin market was smoking hot and when experts were buying with reckless abandon, Mr. De Genova liquidated his entire inventory. Then, just two months later, the rare coin market collapsed. In April of 1989, he sold his entire inventory to Kidder Peabody's American Rare Coin Fund at 10% over market value. Now, that was at the very same time that the experts had a real severe case of Wall Street fever. A little more than a month later, the coin market crashed. Financial strength, stability, longevity, and integrity. Tangible Investments of America has been conducting business continuously now for nearly 20 years and has realized a profit every year with the exception of one. TIA maintains a seven-figure net worth and it's also debt-free and it has a staff of seasoned experts second to none. Tangible Investments of America under the leadership of Mr. De Genova has assembled an elite staff of numismatic experts whose combined experience exceeds 200 years of rare coin trading. Collectively, they have traded more than three quarters of a billion dollars worth of rare coins. Now that's quite an achievement. The combination of experienced leadership, seasoned staff, impeccable reputation, and strong financial position make TIA unique in the rare coin industry. At Tangible Investments of America, customers acquire the optimum coins at the very best possible price, a winning and profitable combination. And that 
is the tangible difference.